Hello everyone and good morning. Welcome back to Wake Up Wild, Peak Wildlife Park. This morning we are, as many of you might have seen, that we are going to our African village. However, we have got a little bit of a treat for you this morning. We're going to go into our um, African spirit tortoise enclosure to see Jack. Um, and we're going to give him a little bath this morning as well. Um, so I'm going to start making my way round um, and I'll give people a little shout out to who's joining us. So there's Becky, Christopher, Irene, got a few people this morning so I'm just going to start making my way around and Yaz is already in there now so if you've got any comments guys as we go um, please just let us know and I will ask Yaz for you. You can hear the pigs screaming in the background so you look very good morning to you all as well. So I'm with Yaz now. Hi everybody good morning and um, welcome to Jack the Tortoise's enclosure. So he's just inside now, I've just uh, been in just to check on him, he's just woke up. So this morning we've got a little bit of breakfast for him and we're going to be giving him a little bath as well. So we'll head in and see Jack. Morning to Mary. Morning to Rachel, Ian, Stephanie and Jack of course. <laughs> so here is Jack. Now, Jack is our sulcata tortoise, and these are sometimes also called spurred tortoise as well. So you can see Jack's definitely ready for his breakfast there. Hope he doesn't stand on me because he's quite heavy. So you can see there, he really loves this raw mane lettuce. You can have a nice close look at him. So he does like a little tickle sometimes, but I think he's more bothered about having his breakfast there. So this species of tortoise comes from Africa. Um, so I think these are found in the Sahara Desert, so you can see this lovely sandy colour here definitely is going to help with camouflage for Jack in that desert area. He's got a lovely yellow colour and nice dark scales here, so you can see as well all these individual scales on his leg there. You can see how big they are. So he's definitely making short work of this lettuce. So tortoise is a herbivores. Um, so here at the park, what we tend to do is Jack has that lovely big paddock, if you've seen before, he's got plenty of grass that he can munch on throughout the day, which he does. We don't actually have to cut the grass in there, Jack eats all of that. And what we do as well is we'll wander around the park, we've got a lovely big nature walk, so lots of plants growing in there, and we'll pick different plants and flowers for him. One of Jack's favourites is dandelions, so he likes the leaves and the flowers. So if you've got a tortoise at home, or maybe even a rabbit, Dandelions are one of their favourite things to eat and Jack really does love them and um, a really nice treat for him as well. And um, it's also good to tempt him in when he's been a little bit naughty and doesn't want to come in at night. A nice bright yellow dandelion usually does get him in. So you can see Jack's quite big here. Um, Jack is 27 years old. Um, so he was actually someone's pet. Um, so when tortoises are born they could probably sit in the palm of my hand. Um, but you can see Jack is incredibly big, so I wouldn't recommend getting a sulcata tortoise as a pet. There are a few different smaller species you can get. Um, as you can see, he's quite big and he does require a lot of heating and specialist UV lights and everything, just to make sure that he grows properly and his shell doesn't become deformed. So you can see him munching away there and he's got this lovely big beak here. So tortoises don't actually have teeth, he just has this big beak. Um, and something that helps grind that down is a cuttlefish. I think he must have eaten the one in here. So it's just an extra bit of calcium. It helps grind that beak down and make sure it doesn't get overgrown. And it also gives him all the calcium he needs to grow big and strong. So it is quite a cold morning here at Peak Wildlife Park. It's actually zero degrees. Um, so I don't think Jack will want to go out this morning. Um, so instead, what we've got here for him, I've got some nice warm water and we're going to give him a little bath. So a nice bath to start your week off. Um, Jack has regularly scheduled baths um, throughout the week here at the park. So it helps keep him nice and clean and it also keeps him nice and hydrated. So you can see he's stopped eating there. I think he quite likes having a little bit of a bath. So, so have to be careful not to get it into his eyes and face, he doesn't really like that. We've also got a scrubbing brush as well, which he does quite like, <laughs> especially on the back bit here. 
So you can see Jack's got quite a good life here. He gets fed, he gets bathed. What more could a tortoise want? So good food. <laughs> He's quite enjoying it. <laughs> it is. Well, who doesn't want to be bathed on a Monday morning? So just like I bet you, all of you guys probably had a bath or a shower before getting ready for school, Jack has one to start his day and it means he's just going to get nice and warm. So with um, Jack being a reptile, he is a tortoise, that means he doesn't generate his own heat, so he has to get it from other sources. So you'll find him sat underneath these heat lamps or on a sunny day, he absolutely loves to sit outside in the sun and just sunbathe, have his eyes shut and just completely relax. There we are, so he's chilling out now. He quite likes that. Hi Jack, where are we going? <laughs> he's just chilling out there. So each of these on his shell, and these scales are actually called scoops. And some people ask, can Jack feel through this? And he actually can. So it's just like when you tap on your fingernail, a little bit of pressure, that's what Jack can feel. So I think Jack wants to give him a little bit more of a bath there, doesn't he? Do we give him a scratch here? So the Sulcata tortoise is also called the spurred tortoise, and that's just because they have spurs on their back leg. I don't know if you can see just underneath here, he's got those spurs. So I don't want to stick my fingers in there in case he pulls his leg in and um, because Jack's very strong if he doesn't want to move he definitely won't move and he does weigh um, around 60 kilograms and male sulcata tortoises can weigh up to 100 kilograms so if you don't know what that is that's 100 bags of sugar so it's quite heavy and um, so if we ever have to lift Jack it does take a few of us and um, luckily it doesn't happen often and um, it's quite heavy and it's also quite awkward and lots of places to get your fingers stuck there if he pulls his legs in. So I think Jack's enjoying his morning bath here. Give him a little bit of a scrub as well. So get all that dirt off, make sure he's nice and clean. If you guys have any questions then please just pop it in the comments and Yaz will ask, answer those for you. So sulcata tortoises are known to be quite grumpy. Um, so this is really good for Jack. He can be a little bit grumpy sometimes. Um, and if he doesn't want something, he'll just walk past it or straight through it. So this is a good sign he's like in this bath. Um, and like I said, it does hydrate him. And if he's feeling a little bit unwell, and um, that also does help him as well. So if you have any tortoises at home, if you just have a little bit of research, most of them do like a little bath. Um, if you have a smaller tortoise, you can just put some shallow water in a sink or a bathtub and just put, pop them in it. However, with Jack being so big, it's quite hard to find something we can actually fit him in that he doesn't actually wreck. So outside, he does have a little shallow pond, um, which he does sometimes like to go in in summer. Oh, am I getting told off, Jack? Sorry. <laughs> so it's just reminding me to keep bathing him. I think he's quite liking it. I don't want to stand on my toes. Where are we going, Jack? So we have got a couple of questions. Yeah. So Teresa's asking, will he get any bigger? Um, he's probably about fully grown, although each tortoise is different, just like people. So they do come in different um, sizes, but we haven't really noticed a massive change in Jack. Although he probably is still growing quite slowly. Oh, there we go. And we've got another question from Frey asking, what's the lifespan of the species? Um, so... With the sulcata tortoises, it is a little bit of a weird one because nobody has actually kept them in captivity for that long. Um, they are the third largest species of tortoise, so I'm going to be guessing at least around 100 years old. Um, so Jack's probably going to be here long after I've retired. Um, so we'll see. Um, if anybody does know, you can maybe pop it in the comments and let us know. But from my research, I haven't actually found a definite lifespan. Giving the camera a little wink there, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
Which is an interesting fact about these tortoises as well. Even though they are quite common as pets, they actually are classed as vulnerable on the IUCN list. Which means these are one of the species that do need a little bit more help out there in the wild because their numbers are decreasing. Question from Sally asking how did Jack get his name? I'm not sure actually. No, I, don't, I don't think I know the answer to that. I think he might have come to the park with his name. Yeah, so he, he, he did used to be a pet, but I can imagine, I don't know if anybody has a tortoise this big in their home, um, but it's quite a lot of hard work. We do love him though, he's definitely worth it. Um, so we think he did come with that name. It is a very good name, it does suit him. Someone's enjoying his morning bath, aren't we, Jack? <laughs> Relaxing. He is, he is a good boy. Um, is just asking how old is he? And um, we think he is 27 years old. Um, or will he be turning 27 in January? So he's getting on a bit now. He's not too old though. He's got plenty of life left in him. But. Certainly older than a lot of the young visitors we have here at the park who can't believe how old he actually is. Having his little spa day. Nice Super spa, isn't he? It? It's always a nice job anyway. <laughs> Give him a little bit of a bath, especially when we know he enjoys it. Maybe next time we should put on some spa music for him. Yeah. Ultra relaxing. Get him an eye mask. <laughs> we'll get you a jacuzzi, Jack. I'm sure I like that. Catherine's just asking, does he hibernate? He doesn't actually hibernate. So with him being a desert species, he doesn't have to. So we, as long as we make sure his temperatures are nice and warm in here, we do have thermometers. Um, we can make sure it stays nice and warm for him which means he can be active all year round. So he does get to go outside pretty much all the time. Because he's such a large animal, he can retain that heat for quite a while. So that means if he goes out for a little bit when it's cold, when he does get a little bit too chilly, Jack knows to come in and get underneath his heat lamps. He's also got underfloor heating as well as a very fancy tortoise. And he knows he can come in here, get warm up and kind of get recharged. So that's what the heat is for the tortoises, it kind of charges them up. He's loving the camera this morning. <laughs> Louise is just asking, what is Jack's favourite food? Oh, his favourite treat is romaine lettuce um, and sometimes a little bit of cucumber. But his all time favourite food is dandelions and dandelion leaves. So you can see he's going underneath his heat lamps here, so we've got two big heat lamps which get really nice and toasty warm I can feel that heat there and he's also got a special UV bulb so this UV bulb just make sure he's getting all the nutrients he needs because he can't always go outside that basically gives him all the vitamins that the sun would normally give him so that makes sure his shell grows nice and even and he doesn't have any deformities so it keeps him nice and healthy so little things like that keep him just as healthy as his food and Jack also gets lots of vitamins and supplements on his food as well. So every morning we'll sprinkle on some different things and that makes sure his shell's nice and strong and um, he's nice and active and also keeps his insides nice and healthy as well. And um, because he's got this really big thick shell, it's actually quite hard to hear inside his shell, figure out what's going on. So the best thing we can do is keep him as healthy as possible and make sure he doesn't get coolie through his wrecking his enclosure. Aren't we Jack? <laughs> so believe it or not, Jack can actually go quite fast. This is very, very slow for him. Um, but when he wants to, which isn't often, he can actually zoom around the enclosure. It's usually when we want to get him in at night and he's decided to go out for a little graze around the paddock and just ignores us and has a good little run around. But he's a good boy and he's a definite favourite amongst some of the keepers here at Peak Wildlife Park. I'll be happy with this. You can have a better little look at him. So you see, just sitting under his heat lamp just to get warmed up and then he might have a little wander out this morning when the ice does start to melt. 
It's very warm in here, so I'm putting off going outside as much as possible for myself. <laughs> So if no one has any more questions, then I think we will leave it there and we will move on to our African village. So I'll just spin around. We'll make our way out of the enclosure. So just so you can see as well, this is all Jack's outdoor space that he has. So when he does want to come outside, he has all this room to have a roam around. So we'll say bye to Yaz. Bye guys, thanks for joining us. And we'll make our way around. So we are going into the African village now guys. So we have got our Cameroon sheep in there and our African pygmy goats. Um, if you have any questions about those or if you've got any favourites from when you visit the park and you'd like to see, I'll try my best to go around to each individual we've got in there. Um, I know we did have a little competition when we were up visiting Phantom the other day. People were voting on who was their favourite goat or sheep. Um, so if you'd like to have another go, then please just pop it in the comments below if you've got any questions, pop those in the comments. And me and Mike will try our best to answer them for you. So I'm with Mike now. Well, Give us a wave. Okay. So we're gonna go feed our African village. If you As you can hear as well, they're very hungry this morning. <laughs> Firstly, I'll introduce you to some of the guys and explain to you why some of them get different feeds to one another. Okay, so if you'd like to step through. So first of all, we've got a little group of Cameroon sheep in here. So these guys all get fed separately from the goats simply just because they're quite slow eaters and the goats can be a bit bullyish sometimes. So if we let the um, if we let them eat together, then the sheep wouldn't get much of a chance to eat. Uh, the goats would tend to bully them away and eat it all themselves. So we separate the sheep in the morning. This is also Jill. Hello, madam. So Jill is a goat that likes to think she's a sheep. So she's just been a little bit cheeky this morning. <laughs> she's just uh, deciding to come in here with the sheep and uh, say hello uh, and see if she, we don't notice. And hopefully she can get a bit of extra food. But we've noticed, Jill. You might be a similar colour to the sheep, but we know you're a goat. The horns give it away. <laughs> so she's very cute. We, she's actually my favourite goat. I think everyone here has got the favourites. Uh, but Jill's certainly my favourite. Uh, she's a complete character. We've got a very love-hate relationship, me and you, haven't we, eh, Jill? I love her, she hates me. <laughs> except when you've got so, food. Except when I've got food, exactly. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pop Jill outside. Come on, madam, pop you go. And I'm going to try and get the two sheep that have just run away back in. So come on, Forrest. Come on, Jeremy. Come on, guys. <laughs> so they're a little bit nervous because there's a goat standing nearby. Like I say, they do. Uh, they do. The goats are quite uh, bullish to the sheep. So when there's a goat nearby, they tend to uh, be a little bit more wary. And it's also because I'm taking a little bit longer than usual to feed them. Normally, you've had your breakfast by now, haven't you, guys? So you're thinking, what's going on? What's he up to? Right, Jill, you're not helping matters. Come on, sheep. Honestly, it's really normally a very simple process. <laughs> it might also be because there's two of us in here, they might be thinking we're up to something. Right, that's it. We've got all the sheep in now. Absolutely perfect. So as Mike was saying, Jill's his favourite. And as I said to you before, we have got a lot of different goats in here. So pop in the comments who's your favourite. Many of you have been here before and many of you have already met our goat, so I'll just refresh your memories for the ones that we've got here. So right at the front here we've got Ralph. Now Ralph's a complete character, I'm sure many of you guys have met Ralph before. And on the rock there we've got Ralph's mum, her name's Daffodil. She's a bit of a celebrity here at the park, I think most people know Daffodil. And we've actually got two of last year's uh, kids over there on the right hand side. So there we have Paddington and Marmalade. 
So those two were actually born here at the park last year. Thank you very much, Paddington. <laughs> so Paddington's just doing a little morning display there. It is very pooey in here this morning as well. I do apologise. You'll be looking around thinking, what's a pooey enclosure? That's just because we've got some very pooey sheep and goats in here overnight. But as soon as we've fed them and checked everyone else, we'll be in here to clean all this up. So it won't be like this for very long. Just to the left of Daffodil there, we've got young Jeff. Jeff is uh, Jill's brother. So those two are brother and sister. And over there in the background, we've got the mum. Her name's Gertie. Now, Gertie also gets a separate feed in the morning. She gets some uh, a nice little bowl of you nut to herself. Uh, but she's standing back this morning. Like I say, it's most likely because there's two of us in here. She thinks that we might be up to something. We do get them in here if we need to check the hooves or if the vet needs to look at them for any reason. So quite often, if there's more than one of us in here, they'll be thinking, hmm, they're up to something. I don't like the look of this, so they will stand back a little bit. But uh, she'll soon come over as soon as she realises that it's breakfast time and uh, we aren't actually up to anything. So I will leave Mike to feed the sheep. I'll make my way round into the enclosure. Give you a bit more of a close-up on these on, gorgeous Jen. goats. Jeremy, come through. <laughs> So we've got a couple of votes. So Liz is saying she loves Daffy. We've got Frey saying she loves Jeff. Remember guys, just pop it in the comments. Yes, sure. Got Daffodil here. And we've got Jeff and Jill. Daff's deciding she wants some attention this morning. So when you do visit the park, you will notice that our goats love attention. Um, sometimes we do have brushes in here as well, so you can help brush our sheep and goats because they absolutely love it. And Daff will try and come up to everyone she possibly can and push the others out of the way because she loves the attention the most. Is that good? So I would say Daffodil is my favourite and she has got to be the boss of the African village. As you can see the others are stood over here. She just keeps edging closer if I ignore her. Every time I stop, she comes a little bit closer. Hi. Ralph? <laughs> oh, Daffodil, you're such a poser. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Daffodil's a complete attention seeker. She loves a good scratch and a good, uh, a good tickle. Don't you, madam? I'm sure many of you guys who've visited here have met Daffodil and you know that she will make a beeline for you if it means she thinks she's going to get a fuss. And Ralph, who you're looking at now, he's the map eater. I'm pretty sure many of you guys who've been here <laughs> back when we used to have uh, paper maps that we handed out have probably had a map stolen by Ralph at some point or another. That's his favourite food in the world is, uh, is park maps. Hey. These guys are African pygmy goats. You'll find these quite in a lot of villages in uh, Central and Western Africa. And they farm for the meat and the milk. But not here, they're not here. They're, uh, they're just cute animals for us to, uh, to interact with. These guys humanize really easily. They love a good fuss and attention. We do also do training with these guys. They will, uh, they will target for us. They will jump up on the rocks like uh, Jeff is there now. In fact, Jeff Bill might be in the middle and get the training for us. Let's grab a little reward for her. So remember guys, if you've got any questions, I would have to agree with the air fray as well. Ralph's beard is spectacular. <laughs> Jess. 
So all these guys are pretty good at this, but um, Daffodil and Ralph know the trick a bit better than the others, so they don't always give the others much of a chance. Unless Jill fancies a go, Jill. Good girl. She's a bit of a grumpy old girl, our Jill is. I'm just giving her a little bit of you up there. That's just a nice uh, little reward for hopping up where I've asked her to. Like I say, she can be a bit grumpy in the morning, can't you, girl? Especially when she can see all the food that she doesn't. Come on, Ralph. So why do you do the training with them, Mike? What's the reason behind it? Various reasons. It's good enrichment for them. It's good social interaction. So, Ralph, come on, bud. Oh, Jill, you're too good. Aren't you? You're beating everyone this morning. So it's just something to keep them busy, to keep the minds nice and active. And uh, it's also really good fun for both us and the goats. We do uh, both very much enjoy doing things like this. It also allows them to behave naturally. So in the wild, come on, guys, hop up. Come on, Ralph, you can do this. Good go, good boy. So these guys will spend a lot of time jumping on rocks and things uh, on the mountain sides, so it's also a good way of getting to, to behave naturally. Daffodil's a little bit behind us there. She's like, oh, I'm doing it too. Where's my treat? Jill, can you get a hop up? No, Ralph's already stolen the show here, I think. Ralph's uh, being a bit of a show off now. Come on then, bud. Oh, stop being grumpy. Come on, Ralph, hop. Good boy. Boy, we've got a daffodil who's still three rocks away who's like, <laughs> oh, but what about me? I'm doing it. We've got Jill who's just being grumpy because she's not getting any food now. <laughs> we've got Paddington just behind who's just coming along to see what everyone else is up to. And we've got the three in the background who aren't the slightest bit interested. <laughs> we've also got these uh, log stumps here. We'll see if we can get one of them to do a nice little sequence hopping along the log. Looks like it's probably going to be Ralph by the looks of it. Come on, Ralph, let's see if we can do them all day. Come on. Up. Three there. Up. Come on, you can do it. Uh, oh, and no, it's a bit early for this, isn't it? Don't you uh, haven't got any stretches yet. This is a nice bit of morning exercise for him. I'm sure you guys are all watching um, whatever that exercise bloke's called. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't need him. He's got to come. come on, Ralph. Up. Come on. Up. Come on. Up. Right. There we go. Let's see if we can get him to hop from one stump to the next. Come on, buddy. Hello. Oh, did him. Yeah, boy. So again, this is a good way of getting them to behave naturally. They will spend a lot of time doing this naturally, jumping along uh, cliff faces, hopping from rock to rock. So this is a good way of getting these guys to uh, show the natural instinct. A bit of a longer one here, Ralph. Are you up to it? Come on, bud. You can do it. You can do it. Come on. No, I'm not. Right, up on here, eh? Come on, you can do this one. Good boy. <laughs> Just wanted to miss that one out. <laughs> Didn't like the look of it. One, did you? Do you want to do the last one? Big one. Big one, bud. Come on, Ralph. Oh, Come on, you can do it. <laughs> it's scary. Oh, oh, no. You're all camera shy, aren't you? <laughs> Hello, Jill. Jill's an attention seeker. She doesn't like anyone else getting attention that she's not getting. So, a lot of the goats can do this. Like I say, Ralph and Daffodil tend to be the attention seekers. They're certainly the clever ones. Up he goes. Good boy. So, they don't always give everyone else much of a chance to have a go. At it. Look at Daffodil standing in the morning sun there. Aren't you a picture, eh, love? But, um, <laughs> but all the goats uh, have picked this uh, training up. This uh, very simple, just sort of target clicker training. We don't used to use a target. We don't really particularly need one now. They uh, do happily know what the point in uh, the point in action means. Come on, Ralph. Hey. Good boy. <laughs> Good boy. We're going to go on this one. You didn't like this one last time. Are you feeling brave? You can do you it. Feeling brave? Come on, buddy. Come on, Ralph. Come on, you can do it, mate. Get on here. You get some food. Oh, it's nervous. I guess you guys were <laughs> cheering him on the phone. Come on, big round of applause. Yeah. Oh, there we go, Ralph. You were very scared of that, weren't you, eh, bud? I'm very proud of you, though. You did that very well. It's like, where's the rest of my food? <laughs> and Paddington's come along to see if she can have a go. I don't think Ralph's going to give you a chance, is he, eh, Pads? <laughs> Frey's got a question for you, Mike. Okay, so, yeah. Do the goats and sheep coexist well, or did they have arguments? Generally, they tend to just sort of stick to their own. So you, will find, you won't find them 
mingling that much with each other. The sheep tend to stick to their little group and the goats tend to stick to their little group. That's just a natural thing that they would do. They don't tend to have arguments very often. Like I say, they tend to just sort of coexist and pretty much ignore each other. Though the sheep are a little bit nervous around the goats, the goats are clearly the more dominant ones. So if there's feeding, for example, if we were, that's why I separated the sheep at the start to give them their uh, feed separately, because if I fed them all in one big trough, the goats would just go and eat from the trough and the sheep wouldn't challenge them. The sheep would just stand back and uh, sacrifice their share of the food. So uh, the goats are more dominant, which is why we feed the sheep separately, but the vast majority of the time when there's no food or incentive involved, they're perfectly happy just uh, just living together in harmony. Except for Jill. Jill is the one who does like to uh, hang out <laughs> with the sheep. She's a goat that thinks she's a sheep. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ralph, you've been well a little done. star this morning, haven't you? Eh? Stop trying to eat me gloves, you. <laughs> he is a very cheeky little goat. Remember, Mike did say, did say, back, did say he is the map eater, so gloves, he's going to give them a go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't know what he says about part maps. I swear, if we offered Ralph a big pile of food or a big pile of maps, he'd pick the maps every time. So look, paper. Come on, bud. Eat your way through a library, couldn't you, eh, Ralph? No, not feeling brave enough for that one. Come on, let's jump. Let's jump. Good boy. So yeah, this is great for us to spend time bonding with these animals. So they, uh, they do really enjoy this uh, these training sessions. <laughs> it's like, come on, I'm getting food out of this. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we go all the way down there, Ralph? Shall we see if we can get you all the way down? Come on, bud. Get out there. Right. Let's see how quick we can do this, Ralph. Come on, bud. Ones one to the next. Yep. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Last one. Last one. Oh, oh, you, big yes. you big cheek. Come on. Up, Bob. Go on. You can have that because you're cute. <laughs> Good boy. Just for being cute. No. <laughs> so this is more just a sort of bit of fun that we uh, do this training with these guys. It's not like a lot of our animals. We do training for. Uh, veterinary reasons for health check reasons that kind of thing with the goats it is more just a bit of fun a bit of fun for us and a bit of fun for them good boy you know i've got food now don't you you're not going to leave me alone <laughs> the other goats are wondering where uh oh <laughs> where their morning feed is hey jill jill's on her way back over now <laughs> So we've got no more questions, Mike, so I think we'll leave it there. Okay, um, then, guys. Well, thank we'll... you very much for joining us, and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much, Mike. And thank you very much for joining us all. Um, we will be live again on Friday at 8 o'clock. Um, so if you've got any suggestions of who you'd like to see them, please pop it in the comments below, and we will go and see something different. We'll try and keep it different every time, so we'll see you again soon. Bye.